Ben Mazzella here again for Small Business Digest. You know, the, uh, someone once said, you, you're never too old to get advice and you're never too young to ignore it. But, that, uh, but that's uh, uh, not for us to say, but rather for our guest. Chris Seaman has uh, uh, devoted a good part of his life to helping pe uh, people be, be better p uh, business people. So we've, we've asked him onto the program because he he's really uh, has a plan for his own future and for, for his company. So Chris, welcome to the program. Well, thank you so much for having me, Don. I really appreciate it. Uh, as we always ask our guests first, tell us a little bit about yourself, then about your company, and finally a website before we go any further. All right, sounds great. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I've been in franchising now for 21 years. Uh, it was one of those um, career decisions that you kind of look at things. I had actually went through a, uh, a layoff, a company merger, and uh, got to meet with the HR people on that one special day when they had multicolored folders. And they said, your career future is now unlimited. It's just not with us. And so <laughs> from there, I uh, really tried to figure out what it is I was going to do. I had the uh, corner office, you know, uh, company car, company phone, all these employees, and all the nightmares and headaches that kind of came with it in a larger organization. And uh, I kind of stumbled into this one small franchise company out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. And they just said, hey, we need you to uh, come in and help 35 small business owners be more successful. And I said, you know what? That sounds like a lot of fun. I'll do this for a year. And uh, 21 years later, here I am still in franchising. And the primary thing is I, I just kind of fell in love with it. It was... Uh, the passion for people who wanted to do something in their business and in their lives and, and impacted their families and their communities. You saw immediate results when you coached and worked with people who were in that situation. And, you know, you got to sit around the dining room table and meet the family and, and really get the impact of what it is that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I've always been fascinated by entrepreneurship and the people who are passionate about opening and running their own business. And it just gave me that insight in, into that. And it really, you know, I ended up staying at that organization for 10 years and worked my way up to vice president of the organization. And then about 12 years ago, this company in Cincinnati reached out to me. They had an opening uh, in one of their presidential positions here uh, in Cincinnati. It was about a four hour move for me down from the Detroit area. And I, uh, you know, after talking to them, I got, got super passionate about what it is that they were interested in, really wanted to take that next step in my leadership career and see what I could do on my own. I ran that organization for about seven years. And then we switched over to, I took over all of our brands with our primary one that we're talking about today. The one I run directly is our brand called The Growth Coach, which is our business, uh, small to medium-sized business coaching concept. And, uh, you know, for anybody who's interested, which I think it's a, a great opportunity for small and medium-sized businesses, it's, it's thegrowthcoach.com, which would tell you all the services that are available. And that's spelled, uh, it's spelled almost kind of like how you think it is. It's T-H-E-G-R-O-W-T-H-C-O-A-C-H.com. And that'll get you right to all the services that we offer in the communities all across the United States. And in fact, the world, this is our largest uh, concept uh, internationally, as well as uh, uh, and we get into that. And, um, but, you know, that's one of the things that kind of lead back to Don is, uh, you know, the whole theme is, you know, my entire career has been built around coaching and to have this avenue to help businesses outside of my direct organization is something that, you know, incredibly passionate about and has just had a, you know, just had a blast as we try to really determine what it is that's going to be next in the world, especially as we're going through everything we're going through today. Uh, agreed. Well, now let's first talk about the, the, the growth uh, coach. Um, what type of person do you look for to be a, a, um, a franchi franchisee? Um, and what do they need to be uh, successful? Well, you know, the, what we look for in somebody, it, it is helpful to have business experience because, you know, that adds into the kind of the credibility when you're talking to your clients about how you're going to help them with the business. Um, obviously, because we are a networking, interactive coaching concept, you have to be pretty interested in working with people and 
and really being engaged in your community, whether that's your chamber of commerce, your your chamber of commerce, your uh, business networking international, uh, any of these other kind of uh, networking groups, as well as being willing to go out there and talk to you know your CPAs are a, a big one for us, and uh, bankers and other people who interact with small to medium sized businesses who might need assistance in, in taking it to the next next level. So you have to be both passionate about helping small and medium sized businesses grow, but passionate about going out and just talking to the community about what it is that you do and what you represent and what you stand for. And then we look for people, this is interesting because you don't have any employees. It's your, uh, your, you know, that's one of the things you're in business for yourself, uh, literally. And we work with people who um, in age ranges, they're pretty varied, um, but we also work with a lot of folks that this is like, you know, their give back time in their career. They've retired from their main, you know, career growth. And now they're looking to how can they give back? And we have people who work, uh, you know, 60 hours a week at it. And we have people who work 20 hours a week at it. Really just, it, it's really one of those flexible concepts that allows you to be really impactful in your community. And so it's somebody who just wants to kind of uh, demonstrate those traits. You don't have to have any specific business experience, i.e., we don't go and target a specific industry. Our product isn't designed to do that. It's really designed to really help you understand how to take all of your career experience, preferably some coaching in your background at some point in time, you coached employees and peers, and then that allows you to take whatever business it is and help set them on a journey for greater success. So basically you're saying, I, uh, I come to, um, uh, I'm 61 years old. I've, I've just basically either been, uh, encouraged to retire or um, made sure I'm retired. And you say, I don't, I don't want to uh, just sit around. My wife won't let me. So uh, I come to you and, and, and what do I buy from you? Well, you do, there's a couple key areas that you're going to require, get from us. Well, we're going to train you. If you've never owned your own small business, there's a, of course that whole avenue of how to set up and start and run your small business and how to market it. We're going to train you on all the sales and marketing uh, issues that can allow you to interact and grow and develop your client base. And then the other thing we're going to do is teach you the actual how to facilitate the product and, uh, you know, how do you determine uh, in your conversation, what is the right product mix for the clients that you're talking to that's going to help them uh, grow their business. And then you get uh, ongoing support for the five years of the contract or longer, depending we are, we have you know, you can renew your contract as many times as you'd like. Um, and then you get into that concept of, you know, what do we help you hear from our Cincinnati office? But we also uh, going to institute you into one of our peer-to-peer -peer growth coach groups where you're going to interact with other growth coach owners. We have um, such names as Motivational Mondays, uh, where all we get together and we share successes we've had over the last month. And then we have our um, Fear Fighters group, which you know allows you to take a look at business challenges that you have and how other growth coach owners uh, overcome overcome those. So it's one of the key things we're very excited about because our owners not only are great coaches, but they're great peer to peer mentors, and you get that as naturally as part of your relationship with the growth coach. And uh, we continue to do that and develop your business alongside you all along the way. So. It's a, a multi-leveled support mechanism and it's a educational mechanism. We teach you how to be a better educator, better coach. And then we continue update and develop new product uh, that you'll be able to introduce to your marketplace. Uh, something that's very interesting to us today is that if you look at any of the research and a lot of the feedback we're getting from our business owners is that a lot of uh, the generation that uh, started a lot of businesses in the United States and the baby boom generation is reaching the point where they need to transition their business to what's the next leadership group who's going to be in, whether it's people who already work in their company, family members, employees, or is it somebody from the outside? Is this a, a sales situation? And if we're going to promote people internally, how are we going to transition everybody in? And, you know, kind of get that succession plan in place. And that's a, a product that, you know, we've worked very hard on and uh, have tested in markets and has been introduced to all of our growth coach owners in 2022 with something that they can continue to take out there and grow in the marketplace based on the need of the clients out there today. So now the, that, sure, now that's sure. a very interesting point because all of our research over the last, our research of our company 
has shown that the biggest single issue facing this older generation is who's going to take the business. Their mm-hmm. children don't want it. They, you know, you're being handed a business and they don't want it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, what we found out, and you know, and this is something I learned in franchising a long time ago, your passion is not necessarily your children's passion. And, you know, they could have been in your business the whole time, and it's not really necessarily even what they want to do. And because uh, we always talk about this, and you know, one of the key red flags in franchising is when dad comes along and he wants to buy a business, he's very excited about the business, but he's going to have his children run the business. We want to make sure those children are just as passionate about the business as dad is, because in the long run, you know, dad didn't plan on working the 60 hours it took to launch this. So if the kids aren't excited about it, it it's not going to go well. But I think that's that's an excellent point. You know, you, you have to, uh, you know, I, I think of, you know, even in my personal relationships, friends who, have you know, been running these businesses for 30 years and they have three kids and they really anticipated their kids would uh, be excited to be in the business. You know, one's an artist and you know, one's really interested in being a teacher and the other one's in the, in the medical field and not one of them is interested in the actual business itself. And so how do you build that succession plan up to make sure you continue your legacy, which is that business that you started and launched? And there's ways to do that, uh, whether it's internal staff members selling to current members, equity over time, there's outside people that could come in as long as it's the right type of people, that, you know, because like, we find out that you know, especially a lot of these folks are looking to retire because they had planned on turning it over their family. You know, they're concerned about their legacy and they're not, they just don't want to see that business disappear and, and, you know, get a couple bucks and then everything they built their entire life is just now poof gone. So. Well, uh, you're, uh, let's stop here. Your website again for our audience. Our website is uh, thegrowthcoach.com. And, you know, again, going back to spelling it out for you, it's T H E. G R O W T H C O A C H dot com. So it's literally the growth coach.com. And I'll take you to all of the uh, products. And also, can also, if you want to cook up with a coach and uh, develop that relationship, it has all that information available for you on there as well. And if for any interest you're interested in being a coach yourself, there's a link right on there and it'll take you right to our franchise website, which will put you through the whole process of what it would be to become a franchise uh, business coach yourself. Okay. Well, one of the big issues of, of, of franchise, uh, you know, uh, we, it's ironic. We just came from the International Franchise Show last mm-hmm. week. And we, we've we been going to it for years. And I know the IFA pretty well. But the question I have is, the t- single toughest thing to teach people is to sell. And then they, and you're asking people to sell themselves. How do you get them to sell themselves? Because no matter what the banner is behind them, it's still the person. 100%. And it's built on relationships. So what do we do is, you know, there's a couple different steps we take through. But one of our products we offer is sales mastery, which is uh, sales for the non-sales person business owner. Because that's a you see that's not only a problem for us, it's a problem for every small business owner out there. They had a great business idea, but how do they sell it? And so with our sales mastery, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to create a target list. And what we do is like, what's your background? So like you came out of HR, well, let's determine who's the good people in HR that you can talk to that can continue to help you kind of develop your message and get out there because we want to give people a soft landing. What we want to build on immediate successes right away, because that's ultimately when someone gets into business, if you're sitting here and you're struggling for six months that you're not getting clients coming into your business, then you start getting the imposter syndrome that you're not uh, an effective business owner yourself because you can't sell. And we, our product for the most part, um, if you went back five years ago, was always just a very in-depth, long one to two year commitment type product. And it took a long sales cycle to get clients interested in that particular product. And what we've done is we've introduced starter products that are a lot easier that maybe aren't so much based on you personally. So they get to know you, get to know your personality, get to know your business skill traits. So things like we're very, um, you know, one of our big entryway points for people is we do a lot around DISC. And uh, we have two organizations we work very closely with that have some great online products. And, you know, what we do is it's a, it's a two hour coaching session attached to uh, the actual testing that you can do. And it's pretty, We do the more in-depth versions and we allow to show you how that allows you to then interact with your staff, your your community, 
and whatever it is and where your strengths are and, and where can we really uh, focus on growing you and your business. That tends to be a less stressful product for our coaches to introduce to someone because it's only a two hour commitment, relatively small on the price point and everyone's familiar with DISC. And then once you get in there and you can really demonstrate how you can help that organization, maybe take DISC to their entire organization, build a team DISC profile, and then you start going, okay, well, Sam has this problem, we'll switch him to this product, which, you know, maybe such a thing such as smart time management. So it's really about getting the uh, quick success, giving them a product with not a high entry point that allows them to introduce themselves to organizations faster, and then continuing teaching them and training them on our sales mastery program, which we have um, a continual training. We, we have we realized a long time ago, you can't just train them the one week, shake their hand and wish them the best. You, you gotta stay engaged every week and talk to them about what are the what are they facing in the field every every day. I'm sorry, well, you say disc. Well, can you, uh, you're saying, what do, what do you mean by disc? I'm sorry. No, 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 that's fine, Don. That's an excellent point. I should, uh, you know, you, you get in this industry and you start throwing around the, uh, every, all the abbreviations like left and right. DISC is, uh, is basically, it's just your standard personality profile. It's based around the concept of, you know, uh, literally D, I, S, and C. And those stand for things such as like, depending on who you talk to, driven, in an influencer, uh, steady person. And the last one is compliance person. So driven tends to be your, your, your hard charging leadership personality traits. Your influencers tend to be your sales type per people who enjoy and need and require social interaction in order to get anything done. Your steady folks are your, your, your standard everyday person for the most part, about 80% of the population is an SC, which is those are your team members. They wanna build good teams and good structures. And your compliance people, those are your sheriffs, those are your accountants, your attorneys, who they want to make sure every I is dotted exactly right and every T is crossed exactly right. And it kind of is, it's based on a lot of research over the last 30, 40 years. And it allows you to really kind of hone in on um, how you interact with others. And when other people are interacting, it gives you a clue to what really how they want to be communicated. Okay, so uh, um, you start and you give this product to to a, a franchisee and you say, uh, help them sell it to other companies so that they get an, uh, a foot in the door. Am I hearing that correctly? Yeah, we have, you know, I'm, I'm just using DISC as the example. Right. We have about 20 of these type of entry level products that allow you to get in the door and really introduce yourself to the business. Well, okay, so um, well, how, how do you as a franchisee decide uh, you have to go out into your community, I assume, and get get yourself known and your products known. How do you help them get to uh, into the community? Well, we we identify we help you identify every group and in the community that you should join, as well as we target listed again. Going back to you know what is your background, and then we're going to try to find those soft landing points of like what is your experience? What, what are the type of if you're from the insurance industry? You know, if you're, you know, what, what would you have a really good background and knowledge, you feel comfortable, we're going to identify those. And then we're going to put you in as part of the, uh, our, our particular process is called the read process. And it's about relationship building. And, you know, when you do that, then you get into the evaluation phase, you know, and, and really develop what is right for them at that moment in their, their business need. Um, it seems to me that your franchise is really pitched for, someone that's at least had some college, if not uh, an advanced degree. Am I hearing you right? Or Well, you know, you can see like if you're talking to someone in their mid fifties and they've had a pretty successful business career, you know, people aren't really necessarily going back into the, uh, um, you know, the college experience per se. They're really looking at, okay, what has this individual accomplished? You know, who have they really interacted with? And I find that one of the biggest things that, that helped you get, going faster in this business is if you do have some sort of coaching background and uh, meaning um, you, you know, even if it's just, you've had a small team and you've had to interact with them and help guide them. So they've been more successful in their job and their career. Um, those are the things that if you've built up over the 30, 40 years that you've been in business um, can do. I think you will find most of our coaches do have uh, 
business degrees and, you know, background in, in education, you know, they've been through the education system, but so, you know, we've also seen people who've just came in with 30 good years of really strong business experience. And, and that, that is good enough to really help run what it is that we do with the growth coach and help people be successful. Well, one of the things I've, I've noticed over the years is um, if our, if the numbers are correct, women now start more businesses than men. What, uh, how do you deal with that? And do you find that women make good coaches or are they better being coached? Um, you know, from our experience, if you looked at, again, you know, growth coach has been around 12 or 25 years. And, you know, when it first really started, I think you would look at our ownership as, you know, primarily in a lot of business settings, white male. Um, if you look at like our ownership group that's come on board in the last two years, you'll see that it's incredibly diverse and, and all, uh, and what we've seen is that women actually make excellent coaches because they do the one critical component that men sometimes don't do. And that is listen. And <laughs> you know, so they, um, and they're, they're here to like, they're not here to prove themselves how smart they are. They're actually there to help the business grow. And it, it, you know, it's just a different way we do our egos and, you know, men can be successful and, you know, we've had some very successful uh, female owners in our system because they, they bring those additional traits to the business. And, um, you know, and we're, we're really pushing into the diversity category, like we said, over the last few years, because I think it really demonstrates what's happening in the real world. We have to have voices that they're able to talk to everybody who's out there opening businesses. You know, the, the reason I laughed is last week I in, uh, interviewed um, uh, uh, someone who said exactly the same thing and then proceeded for the next 20 minutes to, to show us why. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I, I can go on for another 20 minutes, but I think you and your audience would enjoy something else instead. But, you know, I, I can fall in that trap myself. <laughs> no, no uh, uh, in a positive vein. Okay. But, but let's talk about uh, what I'm fascinated by, and I've seen that many coaches fail, is um, their inability to market themselves. Um, uh, and uh, I, I want to hone in on that because I know that would be a question when people see this video that, that they'll be asking themselves, but am I a salesman? And if not, how can I become a salesman? Yep. Yeah, I, I think you're, you know, when we look at the growth coach, you know, one of the things that even goes kind of goes back into some fundamentally different ways we think of coaching. Um, I've seen a lot of the coaching concepts get very, very expensive. And, you know, and then they sell additional product to their franchise owners. And, you know, and as you kind of looked into that, what we wanted to do was we wanted to make sure the growth coach was affordable. And it gave you enough capital to have a ramp up time if in case you had a fear of learning. Uh, the sales side of this business. Um, I always kind of go, when I'm talking to someone who's interested in the growth coach, you know, one of the key things I always talk to them, I mean, if you're not comfortable, say, going into your local community grocery store and talking to people, uh, asking them how they're doing for the day, and, you know, you're very shy or, or, an, or a se severe introvert, um, what's going to drive you past that before you consider growth coach as your career? You don't have to be a Tony Robbins skilled, uh, you know, personality type. You don't have to be some massive salesperson. Authenticity is the critical component, but you have to be willing to push yourself outside your comfort zone and have conversations with people maybe you necessarily wouldn't have been, had in the past. And those are the two first kind of really entry, should you even go through this process? If you're really, really introverted and you have a hard time talking to people, um, you can eventually, based on your capital, hire a salesperson, but you know, that's a huge startup expense that our average owner doesn't have to go through. Then they go through out there and they're able to go out there and represent themselves and build up that authenticity and, and you know, right there face to face. And it's a faster sale then, of course, because you know, you're meeting the product, so to speak, right away. So first determine if you have that personality type, um, you know, and again, I, I don't think you look at our top coaches and say, wow, that's the most amazing salesperson I ever met. They'll even tell you that they're, but they're very authentic and they're very passionate about helping businesses. And that means they'll go have the conversations. They'll get on social media. 
They'll represent their ideas to their community um, and they're not shy about it. And I think that's what's critical. Well, uh, how much is, is a franchise and uh, how, uh, what are the uh, financial considerations? Okay, because a franchise, a growth coach is going to cost you twenty seven nine, um, all in. Uh, from there, we give you all the materials and education and training. So there's no additional cost for product per se. Um, one of our key products is a big one. I don't know if you can see it, but the strategic planner, you know, you'd print out a few hundred of these. So it's going to cost you another fifteen hundred dollars in printed materials, business cards, things like that. Um, so the unit upfront expense isn't very high. There's really very little insurances because, you know, you're not you're not digging ditches. So, you know, the workman's comp's a little bit different because you're just going to meetings and talking to people. Um, and then, you you know, you work out, you know, how do you where do you have a lot of your, um, you know, your workshops that we have to introduce our product to uh, customers and potential clients in the area. So the cost is not super high. And then you just get going and, um, you know, you, you every product we introduce, uh, you know, if we introduce it directly from the growth coach, you know, there's there's no additional fees other than printing materials. And then we do have a few lines like on our disk profile, that's a, those are accepted companies out there in the industry who have these types of tests. You have to pay, we negotiate a, a cost on the test for you. And hopefully you're, you only pay for them when you have a client. So you're passing that cost along to your client as you do it. Well, we only have a few minutes left. So now the floor is open. What would you like to talk about? Well, you know, there's, uh, there's so much going on and, uh, you know, you'd like to talk about, but, you know, one of the things that I'm really passionate about, especially with the growth coach is that, you know, a lot of people, when they get into coaching immediately want to gravitate towards that really big company with a big educational budget. And they want to go in there and they want to get ingrained into that. And over our entire history, we have continued to stay focused on a small to medium sized business. And, uh, I couldn't be more passionate about, you know, the, um, the entire small business community and entrepreneurs who get out there and they put themselves at, you know, they take all the risks and they put themselves out there and to help someone succeed like that. Speaking from a franchise owner perspective is one of the greatest feelings that you'll ever have in, in your business. And I would really just like to highlight the great work of job generation that our small business owners are creating in the United States right now today. They're one of the largest engines for job creation. They're out there in your community changing lives every single day. And, you know, and I'm always a big proponent of, you know, as a franchisor, it sounds silly, but uh, we're big proponents of shop local and, and getting involved with your local community. And I, uh, I'd like to concede that the growth coach is a continued mission to spread that message around the world. Um, you know, I had the great pleasure of going to Ecuador to uh, meet with our master franchise or in that community and Ecuador is 20, 30 years behind the United States in business practices. And so when you would see our business practices applied to these businesses in Ecuador and how they were really um, taking advantage of the things that allowed them to be more successful and how it impacted their family and their communities, um, you know, is one of the proudest moments of my career. And I, I couldn't be more, it just came back to me, you know, tenfold with the passion and excitement I had for these practices to help businesses all over the United States as well. Okay. Your website, one last time. Thegrowthcoach.com. Uh, it's the, and then growth, then coach.com. And it's all one word. And we're excited for anybody to come and take a look at our product and, and see what it is that we offer you and your community. And we'd love to do business with you. And thank you everyone so much for uh, spending time listening to me talk. Thank you, Chris Seaman. Seaman. Thank Thanks, Don. I really appreciate all your time.